What's up, punks? It's Shinobi, and this is a special edition of Block Digest being brought to you on Monday, April 6th. Uh, we have cypherpunk uh, badass Rodolfo Novak, who's braved the apocalyptic wastelands in his gas mask, to, to join me today. What's going on, Rodolfo? Hey, thanks for having me. I'm not a cypherpunk, just a capitalist. <laughs> you, write, you write code and stuff. Isn't, isn't that how that works? I, I'm, I'm not backing down on my labeling. <laughs> all right i'll take it uh i'm beat man today dealing with a toddler at home for you know three four weeks now is uh it's uh it's starting to take a toll <laughs> yeah i can imagine uh based on the, the stories i'm hearing from my sister with her kids in the middle of this <laughs> it's a lot uh, it's a lot more work than it seems mm -hmm. so yeah, i guess uh i don't know why don't we just uh dive into things and we can just ramble about corona as appropriate sprinkled around but um so i i wanted to get you on uh when you first dropped it but things started getting crazy but uh yeah i figured we could talk a little bit about the hardware security module uh mode that you guys dropped under the cold card last month and you know kind of the the general state of that i guess to begin with and then kind of maybe a little about where you're heads at refining that long term yeah so uh so hang on is there a way for me to turn this from push to talk to just talk um if you want to go in the settings there should be a, a mode for the push to talk that'll let you just keep it open like after you click the button and then click again to close it or i guess you could do voice activity and we can see how that goes i'll try that so so yeah so the the hsm so People don't know what an HSM is, a hardware, hardware security module. It, it's sort of like a, an automated machine that does cryptography things, right? So signs transactions or that kind of stuff. Um, so we, we wanted to, to sort of like do something for Bitcoin, but, uh, you know, hardware security modules are very expensive servers, right? Essentially. So what we did was we, we essentially got we wrote a piece of software called a CK Bunker to leverage a cold card as a hardware security module. So essentially, you have a hot cold card doing your Bitcoin stuff uh, using CK Bunker, uh, and uh, you know it can do like it can be a cosine service, it can be a single sign service, um, it can hold your uh, Tor keys. It's all through Tor. Uh, but it has like a nice little UI for you to set up multiple users. It could be multiple code cards. It could be different hardware wallets, all PSPT based. Um, it has all kinds of like uh, spending policies. So you can set up per user, the amount, velocity, um, the time period. That's, that's sort of good stuff. Um, so yeah, so, so we launched that. Uh, oof, now it's what, uh, two months maybe? I can't remember. That sounds about right. So yeah, so uh, it seems that people are using it. Uh, Francis added to uh, Cypher Node. Uh, the guys from Noto are integrating it. Um, I hope to see the stuff on uh, on um, a BTC Pay server at some point. And uh, you know, once the stuff. Oh yeah, the guys from My Node I think are also integrating it. So the the hope is that you know, like this stuff is sort of like one button install for people, and then they can be their own big go. Right, they can have their own sort of service to co-sign their stuff. Mm -hmm. and, you know, one of the kind of things that first popped up in my head, um, you know, when I saw this was kind of the the resource limitations of the the MCU and the secure element. You know, given that these are devices that really don't have a lot of processing power or memory available, so 
Like, it's it's kind of like what what is like kind of the the limit you think in terms of like scalability with how many operations it can handle at one time or the amount of, of users that a single device could actually register and kind of store in uh, memory without really pushing the device too hard or running into the limits um well remember right there is only so many bitcoin transactions that can go into a block anyways <laughs> so um, I think you're pretty safe here into like, if you're thinking in terms of like transactions per few seconds or transactions per minute kind of thing, you're fine. Um, and then, uh, users, I think you can put up a whole bunch, like, uh, I like 12, 20, I can't remember something like that. Um, and then, um, yeah, I, I mean, I guess like the, the, the the bottleneck really is when you have com transactions that are too complex, like you know hundreds of UTXOs, and it's also multi-sig. That's when you're gonna start running into issues. But aside from that, you're pretty safe. Mm -hmm. And then, um, you know, kind of to get into the, the guts and stuff of this. I mean, obviously, the proper way to use a cold card for your your cold storage is to just never plug it into anything ever. That's right. So it yeah. just kind of it kind of changes the the picture a little bit. So yeah. like what what kind of like different operations um you know as far as the the user registration um and the transaction approval like their 2FA token or password like how exactly do these operations get split up between the secure element and the MCU given that this has to stay plugged in to really be used now so once it's uh, once it's in hsm mode it's essentially running hot in the device too right it's running to the mcu that's it um so essentially cold card is uh it could be side channel attacked while in hsm mode uh mind you it's pretty advanced attack there uh so but but still i would uh i would keep it inside the a metal box or something if you're going to leave it unattended. Uh, but what's cool is that once it's in HSM mode, there's a few different options. Uh, there's different levels of lockdown. Uh, you can also have uh, like different levels of, of remote hands, right? So uh, where you leave this device, there's different sort of levels of how you can have people um, uh, authorize things. You can have it in a mode where they have no access to anything. Uh, just shows uh, like there's a just a screen showing you just some on the screen with like a like some stats. Um, you can also uh, put it into a remote hands where they have to put a two factor authentication token like Google off. Uh, and then uh, and then there's another one that's a pin. Uh, otherwise, they can't authorize. And uh, yeah, so there's different sort of levels of trust for the remote location where the device is running. Um, the only concern is side channel attacks uh, because the device is hot. Uh, but even for that, I mean, you know, it's still a pretty advanced attack, so it, it's not as concerning. Yeah, you, you know me, though. I just, I have to be a stickler for every autistic detail. But um, <laughs> right. let, let, let's jump into kind of the, the, the feature set of it, you know, as far as the, the user interacting with it. So the, there's the, the three different um, authentication uh, mechanisms as far as like a user trying to get uh, a cold card in HSM mode to sign off on things. Mm -hmm. um, like what, what was kind of your rationale b between the, the three of them? Because you have like the, the password that you can set up there as well as the OTP uh, time-based uh, mm -hmm. 2FA. And then you have the mode where you actually have to have somebody physically at the device and yeah. punching in the, the pin on the device to approve something. Yeah, so I, I guess it was all like the thing about HSMs, like hot HSMs, is that like each sort of business or user is going to have extremely different needs, right? They're all going to have their own sort of very peculiar way of, of using it. So, I, I mean, since we were already working on it, we just wanted to build like a ton of flexibility. So, uh, you know, say like, for example, uh, uh, bull Bitcoin they're using for their, uh, you know, for some of their operational wallets. Uh, so they have specific needs, right? Like 
who can approve, who can't approve, and each user could have a different level of type of approval as well. Um, and, uh, you know, and then there is like other folks that are just running for their, I don't know, like for their family kind of thing, right? So for those, then, then the guy running the thing is already the trusted user anyways, right? So they can just sort of lower the threshold there to something that's a little bit more convenient. Um, but but the, the point is, you know, it has to be just flexible, right? It, it's like different people, different problems. Um, when you come to automated stuff like this, it's really important to be flexible. Mm-hmm. Hey, I think before I go down the rabbit hole, I wanted to, at some point of all the crazy things I can see this being applied to, um, I, I got to ask, like, what's what's the, the thought and kind of plans looking forward at this um, being applied to Lightning Network stuff? Like, is that something that you guys are actually considering at a, a lower level, kind of tightly integrated in, into the device? Or is that something you're just looking at while you know people can kind of craft policies or kind of add that on themselves? It's kind of like a bit of both, right? It, this is an open source project. As people start using it, I hope that they sort of work on some of the solutions. But, um, <clears throat> but uh, like, I mean, there there is a few different things that we want to do. We just not certainly in a hurry to do because it's still smaller usage. Uh, so one of them is Lightning Network, right? So ideally, this thing is the hot wallet for your channel, um, and that would sort of make security definitely better than keeping keys on a Raspberry Pi, right? Um, Mm -hmm. And then uh, mixing is another very interesting use case for this. So you could theoretically sort of like have this be your mixing wallet because it's it's like it's hot and it it just keeps on doing the rounds that needs to do. Uh, The problem with mixing is that most, all mixing really is non-standard transactions, right? So they're not necessarily PSPT compatible yet. Uh, so there is a little bit of groundwork to be done there. But again, as people need it and they're willing to contribute, you know, this this should be very interesting for that. Uh, especially for like something like Joy Market or I guess any market maker on mixing. Because then you can have a cold card j- just running, right? Doing your market making. Uh, you don't have to be as concerned about leaving those keys hot on a computer. Yeah, that's uh, definitely another big thing I want to see this applied to. I just kind of think, you know, lo- looking at that versus Lightning Network, I think Lightning Network is way more complicated and probably going to be something that comes after people start trying to apply this to coin joins. Yeah, I, I mean, there is that. And then another cool thing you could do is... Uh, I guess like once we support confidential transactions, you could use this uh, to store liquid um, uh, to store liquid BTC, um, and also this could be used as an HSM on a liquid federation, right? Um, oh yeah. So 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 those two uses could be very interesting. Um, I, I mean, like I guess like the goal is to sort of support whatever you know Bitcoiners need, as opposed to what Bitcoiners want. <laughs> Uh, um, yeah, so, you know, whatever there's actual need, uh, you know, we, we hope to support at some point. Yeah, that, that's actually something um, that's been bouncing around my brain. Uh, I think before I even knew you guys were working on the, the HSM functionality for this, because it's like it, you look at something like Liquid and the elements model and the fact that it's pretty much dependent on an HSM to really have the, the full... Mm-hmm. Um, advantage of that type of security model and it's like that was a high like barrier to really set up a platform like that that has the the best security model that they could and like i I was thinking for like i think a year or so now like if you could get something like a cold card and just hack together some firmware to do that i mean all you really have to do is parse um block validation rules and really at the end of the day you could just have a piece of software filter for that before it goes to the hsm for signing yep yep and that should be fairly simple the the key here is just really supporting confidential transactions um uh, i last time i talked to adam i think they were looking to having somebody make pull requests for cold card confidential transaction signing i don't know what the status of that especially with this whole uh shit show <laughs> going on in the world right now but uh but yeah like i mean 
as soon as we have that, it, you know, it'll be pretty cool uh, because you'll be, you know, Bitcoin only wallet. You got your Bitcoin, you got your liquid stuff and, uh, and that's it. Mm -hmm. And it's like, you know, kind of I'm, I'm going to just go full autistic here for a minute. Um, like kind of the, the thing I'm looking at in terms of this device really plugging into the ecosystem in, in a really advanced way is when, when you get this running properly with Lightning Network as well as on-chain stuff, then this is literally the idiot box that will let uh, an individual in this space who can handle being a Bitcoiner properly just set up a bank that they can give all their friends and family an account on and, hey, you just pay through my Lightning node. Like you can store your um cold storage with me in a multi-sig setup where i can hold your hand as a recovery mechanism and a 2fa like you you can really turn this into the foundation of like i'm a bitcoiner i can handle this now i can hold everybody around me's hand who can't handle this without wanting to rip my hair out every five fucking minutes because of the phone call because how does this fucking address work yep yeah no it, it's uh I mean, this is a very early step, a very early sort of solution for for uh, for people to be Uncle Jim, as uh, Matt said, right? Like mm -hmm. you want you want somebody to be the 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 friend and family sort of cosine service, uh, and oftentimes this person is also not going to be super uh, advanced, but they would be at least the most advanced out of a group. <laughs> uh, they they are kind of like you know the the old uh, the family IT person, right? Mm -hmm. And just just like imagine that, like not only the the cold storage mechanisms and like the on chain sign off, but just like uh, you know, my cousin Charlie wants to fucking move um, part of his cold storage into the Lightning Network so he can use it. So move that into a channel on my Lightning node, you know, being handled by a cold card in HSM. And then he can just have his user account that will let him spend up to however much he has on that node. Yep. Yeah, no, it's, uh, it really is, uh, you'd be pretty, pretty simple that way. But, you know, you don't even have to go as far as lightning, right? You could think about that the same for just multi-sig with good old Bitcoin, right? Um, oh, dude, Rodolfo, if you don't think that one of my first thoughts on seeing all the documentation for this was it can sign non-transaction messages how do i make an e-cash server you're high on crack <laughs> sir <laughs> yeah i mean it's already all there do it but it's now like, that yeah, you it's... have uh, a lot of quarantine time probably i have you know that sound are you banging a cold card on the table yep yeah that's the sound of polycarbonate <laughs> but it's it's like that's you know, it's, it's, it's really that, that message signing service, I think, has a lot of potential use because even though, you know, with uh, a small consumer device like this, the throughput in terms of by the second is going to be very low, like that could still work for a lot of small impersonal things. Or if you want to get crazy enough, like you could just have a piece of software that diverts um like different operations to different cold cards that all have the same seed on them and just mm -hmm. kind of do things in parallel like that yep yep yeah i mean you know this is one of those things that like it's fairly fairly flexible so it, you know it's pretty endless in terms of like where it can go well i'm gonna have one more autistic thing to add to the list of where it can go um <laughs> That the, the generalized signing, I think also, um, a lot of people are probably going to want to rip my head off after this, but, um, you know, a while back I actually had a chance to talk to Paul Snow from Factum. Oh, and didn't that project just die? Yeah. I, I, I kind of feel bad for him on a personal level, but on a, as a Bitcoiner, burn shit coin, burn. <laughs> but, um, I mean, that project was dying from the day he launched, right? Like, I mean. This is kind of meandering around, but the, the long and short of it is though, like a lot of what he did with that project architecturally 
like ignoring the the shit coin or like any tokens being built on it i think there actually was a lot of merit for why he designed things that way and you know a lot of bitcoiners look at time stamping and they just go well open time stamps and like that's the the solution to anything but open time stamps is a re- it's it's just a disorganized mess of roll together a merkle tree unordered yeah. and stamp and there are a lot of use cases for time stamping where there is a real good reason to partition something away in its own branch of the tree and have that be canonically ordered in some way for some reason or have like you know different sub branches like that um authenticated cryptographically through an identity so that you can verify the source before you start parsing through this whole tree and there really actually is a lot of utility um in kind of having something that's not just this disorganized mess of a merkle tree and i think the the fact that the the cold card can just sign generalized messages as well as transactions through the hsm feature like that's a, a potential use you could throw this at is actually having devices um you know notarize individual things specifically or notarize with an identity key some pre um sorted um route to a, an ordered merkle branch and you know just completely outside of bitcoin a, a little hsm device would be a nice easy way for n- not the most technical people to run services in a more structured version of open timestamps like that yeah i guess i mean you know my opinion on that stuff it's just like it's all very interesting i'm yet to see something like in the wild actually happening (laughs) rodolfo we need to build an archive service that spits out a time stamped um you know copy of all of these things that you can just have on your device and still have the same degree of proof you know i mean like just throwing archives of everything on the internet at a server forever that's not tenable in the long term yeah yeah i guess that that's like out of my like scope of like (laughs) research and 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 sort of like uh uh yeah we we don't build a lot of stuff for for that um I'm still sort of skeptical on like the appetite of the market for this sort of like thing. Um, but uh, I know people like you being wanting to do this for years. <laughs> uh, well, I mean, in a way or not, like, I mean, zero net is sort of a way into that, I guess. I am one of these days going to get you to realize that you can take all of these cool Bitcoin toys that you're doing and tweak them a little bit to do way wider stuff and make more money. And then you'll have more money to build me Bitcoin toys. I'll take it. Just uh, the the source is open, man. Just go for it. (laughs) You know how lazy I am. (laughs) Same with us. How do you think products are born here? (laughs) (laughs) Well, I guess that that's a hilarious segue. Um, so like <laughs> what what what's going on with this this cold power adapter and the uh the power only magnet link cable that you guys just dropped in the last uh I think week together with both of them? Yeah, so well I mean so cold card uses very little power, right? And a lot of the, the battery power packs they all have this stupid like smartness about them they're all want to auto power off if they don't get a minimum amount of uh, of uh, load um so so a lot of them just stop and so you have to buy the ones that have the option to to turn off the auto power off and uh that was really pissing me off and then i i uh, i open a few apart and like they're all very, very smart inside they all have a bunch of electronics there right um so i'm like okay great so now you can have a power pack that's essentially like a you know a bad usb device right like a like trying to do all kinds of attacks on it you could have like a essentially like a, an attack usb power bank um so in good fashion we we're like okay great let's uh let's go buy let's go first try to find see if we can find a a dumb power pack right turns out they essentially don't exist anymore 
Uh, I mean, there's one or two out there, but nothing that was really interesting. Um, like everything in China, once you have economies of scale in a specific module, that's what everybody uses, right? For everything. Mm -hmm. So uh, so essentially, like pretty much all the power banks are smart and they all pretty much use the same circuit. And uh, um, we couldn't even find the one that was just sort of like, a, say, just double A's kind of deal, right? that was either reasonably priced or was dumb or the whatever we need. So, uh, so we, we set out, Hey, you know, like, let's just design our own power bank and then just make it and then sell it. Um, but then I'm like, no, I want something that's very tiny. Right. And, uh, and I'm a big fan of nine volt batteries because they're designed to last a very long time and they're very available. They have a lot of power. Um, and, uh, and their contacts, uh, have very little mechanic needs, right? So they're, they, you don't need to build a, a little container for them. You just need to make the, put the snaps, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and we found some very nice quality uh, 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 battery contacts uh, that are surface mounted uh, on boards. So that meant we could make a really tiny little device that uses a nine volt battery uh, and, and outputs, uh, five volts for, uh, for you to use cold card or power up open dime or any other low power USB device. Really. Um, we put a little switch on it and it's USB a, uh, so that's a really nice device. It's, it's, uh, it's, uh, what's the size? It's, it's essentially just like a little, a little fatter than a, than an open dime and, uh, and a little taller because of the USB connector. Um, so yeah, so uh, so we we made that uh, and uh, we launched it uh, last week. It's a it's a fun little device, uh, and it's of course in our usual static is bare board. You can actually verify that the the data lines are not there, uh, and that we don't do any shenanigans on the power lines either. Uh, what a lot of people don't know is that there is a lot of USB specs that uh, do data through the power lines as well. Uh, same for QI, by the way, QI. Uh, wireless charging does data as well. Uh, they do some uh, some Ooh, modulation. That the I did not know. Yeah, hmm. so they that that's how they tell what kind of power the device wants. Okay. Um, yeah. So uh, so we were sort of like we we're very down on USB because USB is a clusterfuck. So uh, so yeah, so we created our own little uh, USB uh, power pack, if you want to call it power adapter. Um, and uh it's uh it's cheap we made it cheap so that you know it's like 15 bucks kind of deal and uh we also launched uh power only uh magnetic usb cables uh because you know it's nice so say you have three four cold cards you, you know it comes with like three uh micro c uh, magnetic connectors you put them in each of them and you only need one cable uh connected to your power source and then you just uh, magnetically take it on and off, uh, and you can uh, can do that. It's uh, pretty nice. Yeah, it's, those two things, like I really love those, and I, I feel like a lot of people out there just do not appreciate the <laughs> just omnipresence of those types of little exploits and shit. I mean, like I like I when I get a laptop. The first thing I do is physically rip out the network adapter card because I don't like the fact that nowadays every single Intel system out there has the exact same um, like 7265 chipset. Like why? What's the compatibility uh, concern there? Or like, I think it, I think it's all more related to just economies of scale, really. It's management engine conspiracy. Yeah, though. I mean, you but, know. Companies don't want to manage okay. massive amounts let, let of parts. Let me put it this way. Is, uh, let, me, let me take a less extreme example. Um, you, you know the Pinebook uh, Pro, the, the Pine64 company? Yes. I ordered one of those. And when I got it, there was Windows malware flashed in the boot partition. And actually a good percentage of the, the units shipped okay, um, so, had that so, issue. So here's the non-nefarious explanation for this. <laughs> So a lot of these companies use these chipsets from China, right? Like the 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 the, the ROM of these boards, um, and uh, 
this companies like they just they're all windows based right i mean like the whole industry for hardware really it's all windows uh it's old and uh a lot of the stuff just you know it's parts like especially when you're talking about cheap boards like pines and raspberry pis they're buying they're buying like like five ten year old bins of parts right and the stuff would have like old and patched things and it, you know it's just they just bought the container laugh that they had of those parts and that they're gonna use them uh, and yeah my theory is that the flashing device that loaded the factory firmware and operating system uh, just by default, just spat out Windows firmware. Or I mean, now, yeah, now yeah, we're no. in the boot partition. It, it wouldn't surprise me either. You know, it's just uh, but that's or, just the like, industry. Um, or to, to, I, I should have just started with this fucking example. Um, I, I think it was uh, on Hackaday, uh, like six months ago or something. Somebody demonstrated a malicious uh, bad USB cable. Oh, yeah. And the, the housing for both ends of the cable was the exact same physical dimensions as like a factory cable. Like they oh, that, did not that, need to increase the housing that, for that. Yeah, no, totally. Like nowadays, I mean, you, you can fit like memory and processing that's required for these attacks, like in like very little space. Right. Uh, and another cool thing is uh, you can do low pressure over molding at home with a hot melt gun with the, the right, with the right sticks. Like you can buy the black sticks that are for low pressure over molding, uh, and, and you can print the mold. So, <laughs> so you can reverse engineer the, the design of the cables over molding, like the, the connector part, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, you can make your own cable and then you can over mold your stuff with something that will look like exactly like the final product. It's, it's quite amazing, really. Uh, so yeah, no, I mean, USB cables are a huge liability. And uh, especially because the USB stack is such crap, right? It, it does too much stuff that it shouldn't. So, uh, so then you end up in this spot, right? I mean, it's an unattainable situation. That's why it's so important to have like an adulterated power from a very dumb device. Uh, like a cold power little adapter, and uh, and then you know you, you already took out a lot of like uh, attack surface there. Mm -hmm. And it's you know it's why I appreciate you guys like building the, these little things to go along with it. You know what I mean like I, this this is why I love CoinKite and your guys' products so much is because you just do not stop looking for new attack surfaces and looking for ways to deal with them. Like almost every company in this space to some degree or another just like hit some point of security and then just went, that's good enough and just stopped. And it's like every couple months you guys are pushing forward like, oh no, here's another potential problem here in the big picture and here's a way to deal with it. Yeah. I mean, you know, like the way I look at this is uh, it's a very nascent technology, right? Bitcoin, um, it, you know, it's only 10 years old. So like to think that you can make a device now and, and expect it to be still like top of the line in terms of all the needs for security and features in a year or two, like it's completely like insane. You know, I hope to be pushing out a device every year and a half, two years uh, for a while because there's just so much we can do, right? I mean, there's so much we want to do, like, you know, there is other features I want to add to Cold Card Mark III, but I don't have enough memory already, right? Uh, so, uh, so yeah, I mean, we're we're gonna we're gonna keep on doing these things, and then, and then there is the reality of the security, right? I mean, we're we're all learning, right? I mean, there has never been devices that are consumer grade that you hold millions of dollars, you, you know, and and the device costs like a hundred bucks. And you're trying to solve all the tinfoil hat problems, right? It's a, it's a pretty novel, uh, it's a pretty novel, uh, um, like problem set. And, uh, yeah, so, so I, I just, I, I never understood why the, the competition just sort of like stops. I mean, like those guys just make something, you know, decent or whatever. And, uh, and then that's it. Just, you know, they just copy and paste to the factory, right? Um, we're mm -hmm. not interested in doing that at this point.
And it, it especially boggles my mind in just the, the Bitcoin space of all spaces. Like most people here, especially those working with technology, should realize like all of this period is fucked. Like I, I like I'm probably the the extreme outlier outside of the norms. But like I have a whole stack of laptops and like when I travel with one, I wipe it before I go. I wipe it when I come back. Like none of these have physical networking cards still installed on the board. Like all of this shit is fucked. Like in Bitcoin of all things, like iteration, that shit needs to keep going and not stop full steam for the next 10 or 20 years. Yeah, no, I mean, yep, yeah, there is a lot to do. Um, and, and there is a lot of lessons learned, right? I mean, you know, we've been in this space now, Cold Card is what, just over three years old? I think something like that. I kind of lost track. Um, I feel like that's right, but I think we had this exact same kind of uncertainty with dates last time you were on with the Open Dime, and I couldn't remember them either. Yeah, I lost track. And, you know, like, but even talking to the manufacturers who make the secure element and stuff, like, you know, like, it's just that the, the pound, like the value was never in the device, right? It's a different model of, of like, it's a different asymmetric problem there. Um, so, uh, so we're trying to just sort of work with them and sort of improve things. There's actually a new version of the secure element coming out uh, with, you know, more interesting little protections too. Um, and, uh, you know, and, and, and then we're sort of like, sort of like playing around with other things we can do, like, um, you know, like a live device that has tripping stuff. And anyways, it's, uh, there is a lot to sort of research and, and create. Um, and then, I mean, there is whatever else we want to do with our lives, right? We don't want to do anything else. So this is, <laughs> this is where we want to put the time and the effort. <laughs> weaponized uh, autism yeah you know like it's uh yeah i mean i uh yeah we we just want to make stuff right uh we're gonna be launching a metal backup plate as well soon uh probably coming out in a week or two um because we were not satisfied with the metal plates around and uh I know. I mean, it kind of drives me nuts, right? Like, um, it's just that like companies in the space just refuse to either fix the problem or work like, you know, like professional adult companies. <laughs> so like, it makes it very difficult, you know, like sometimes we just don't want to make the stuff, right? We want to just sort of like find one company that does the thing right and just, you know, put their stuff on our store, right? But, but they just... You know, a lot of these companies just don't like just can't offer like the either the the volume right or the price right or like or the solution right. So it's just you know. So and then we just go okay. Well, you know, we just make it ourselves then because <laughs> it's like you know it's not that hard to make a metal plate. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I like some of the things out there, but it's like I. Uh, I have a few of them. I don't like the things with the loose letters because you lose those. And then, like, the one solid plate that I had. All right. Well, before I was so rudely interrupted by my incompetent overloaded ISP, um, <laughs> I, I don't like the uh, the individual plate systems because that can have a lot of trouble with warping. And um, then, like, the, the only plate that I have that's solid is, like, an etch instead of, a like, a pounding right. of a, a thing. So that's not in there deep enough. I, I think, like, there's a lot of interesting novel solutions there, um, like Cypher Wheel and, like, some of this stuff. But I think that ultimately the issue for me is that, like, uh, it's, like, I have all those because they're very interesting devices. But for actual backup, you want a simple plate with holes in it. That's it. Like not holes, like markings on it. I, I really want something simple. Uh, and I want something simple that I only do one. So I want 24 words per plate. Um, so yeah, so we're, we're making one. Uh, we'll make it uh, fairly affordable and uh, put it on the store. That's good shit. You're covering all the bases. Yep. It's uh, that's the plan. 
All right. And so I think, uh, you know, for the most part, last thing I really wanted to get into here was a, um, a mnemonic seed proposal uh, you showed me earlier, actually, that I missed from like two weeks ago. And I think it's actually a, a pretty interesting idea that kind of takes something I was playing around with and does it in a much more compatible, like thought through way. You kind of yeah. want to run that through for uh, everybody? Yeah, so so this BIP doesn't even have a, an assigned uh, number yet. It's uh, Essentially, all you're doing is you have a, a master seed, and then you can generate new seeds from the master seed, right? You don't want to use this for your hot wallets or stuff like that, right? So, like, you have your, your, your cold storage, and then with that cold storage, you generate seeds for your hot wallet don't use it that way that'd be stupid um the way i see this is more like you know uh say you have three four phone bitcoin wallets and uh, lightning wallets and those all use bip39 seeds right so uh wouldn't it be nice to have say your cold card uh operational wallet or your super cold one uh generate seeds for you uh deterministically and and then you load those up in those app wallets and then you don't have to have one freaking like physical backup for each phone wallet it's a, it's a true pain in the ass so uh so yeah so so that's sort of like the idea i find that pretty cool uh that beep was already there uh, and I sent an email to the mailing list, uh, I think it was today, uh, asking if anybody had reviewed it or taken, you know, or, or if that was going to take, a, a number on it. I have a feeling that, uh, we're going to implement this BIP on code card, even if it doesn't become an official BIP. I think it's a cool feature anyways. So, uh, we'll go from that. Yeah. And even, you know, like I, I, I definitely get your jump to the base notion that like you should never mix this with like a cold wallet seed deriving hot wallet seeds or things like that but yep. i think you can use it for a lot more than just that kind of condensing your hot wallets uh and their seed backups yeah you know, sure no i mean yeah you, you could even uh uh here's a cool one for example you could have one single source of entropy essentially right that's what this is uh to generate three uh, different seeds for, for multi-sig. So you could have theoretically one multi-sig backup that is, uh, in, you know, under the C and then you have, uh, three, uh, seeds that you create your multi-sig with. And then those three could be like backups that are more available. Let's put it this way. Uh, it's still geographically separated or whatever however you would originally do your multi-sig separation but you could have a master master uh single backup which is kind of cool uh you know this is not for everybody for everything right uh but it could be very useful say for a business uh that has to maintain you know a few different warm wallets or do a few different hot wallets uh and they want to have uh like a master backup uh, where, where they, those things, uh, that could be cool as well. Um, you, you know, and then for devs, this is huge, right? Because, uh, Bitcoin developers, not necessarily just core, but I mean, like anybody working on wallet development often needs seeds <laughs> and like hundreds of seeds, uh, to do stuff, uh, and his development stuff. So things get lost. So it's pretty cool to just have access to a, a pile of seeds so that, you know, every year or so you double check of those to make sure you didn't forget some funds somewhere. Because it happens, right? You put a Satoshi here, a few Satoshis there, time passes, big number go up, and then, you, you know, and then you lost real money. So uh, that's a nice little use case as well. Uh, I don't know. I find it to be a, a very useful, uh, simple BIP. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, like, I've I've been reading about this idea at you for a while, but 
I think this would be perfect for like that notion of like a chaperone wallet that I've been talking about. Cause it's like, you know, I, I finally like a year and a half ago convinced my mom to buy a little bit of Bitcoin. And as things stand now, I pretty much have a copy of her seed and all her stuff because I just do not trust that she will not fuck that up and lose or break something. And like now I just have this extra seed that I have to have a copy of. Like if if this BIP was around, I could have just derived one for her from my cold storage and have a pretty, you know, unless, unless hash functions start breaking down, there's no way to reverse that to my seed. Mm-hmm. And then I can just always have that that safety net for her without having to keep track of extra shit on my end. Yep. No, that's uh, that's it. It's a uh, it's a nice little thing to to handle the all the extras. That's how I like to look at it. You know, if the extras are other people or other wallets or whatever, you know, I, I think that's a very useful uh, a very useful bit. Mm-hmm. I hope it gets a number. So do I. Otherwise, I'm going to have to start memeing about how cold card is the new BIP reference point. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be pretty funny. I mean, you know, I, I remember that that's not too different than uh, what happened with PSBT, right? You know, they already had a number and stuff, but it was just sitting there for, I don't know, a couple of years. Um, it, it seemed to have lost uh, a lot of attention. And uh, we saw that BIP and, you know, it sort of started pushing. Let's get this. Uh, let's get this out. Uh, we got out a little too early, and we had to redo it with slightly different, so that we wouldn't have to fight with the spec and whatever. Uh, we're okay with that. Um, we're not like. I mean, I guess there's a reason why we don't contribute to course. Like, we're not very good at uh, this kind of uh, <laughs> this kind of standard collaboration. Uh, <laughs> we know our limitations. Well, I mean, it gets to be a, a fucking shit show with everybody arguing over stupid things. Because that's I important, this. though. I, you know, that that's super important for like protocol levels. Uh you, you know, you want Bitcoin to be a pain in the ass to change. Uh it's just that, like, I, I, I don't, I, I like to move a bit faster, so like, I totally get it. But uh, I mean, it's it's all the fringe stuff that isn't around the protocol. You know what I mean? Like there's so like yeah. all these mnemonic things aren't protocol specific. Like there's so much ancillary stuff that still, still is arguing over stupid yeah, shit. I still I still find the value in hearing with a lot of a lot of smart people have to say there about this stuff, right? I'm not a cryptographer. So like, you know, it's it's nice to see what like, you know, actual cryptographers have to say about some of this uh because you know, like on the implementation level uh like us uh you know like we, we don't want to break stuff right we don't want to we don't want to we don't want to use things that have holes like cryptography holes not implementation holes oh well, yeah so, but you know to, so. to to toot my own horn um you re- you remember that uh the mnemonic idea i had extending the dictionary a while ago yeah i argued with like two cryptographers for like two hours going no I'm right before they actually understood what I was saying. And then, went, oh yeah, that is secure. Yeah. Well, yeah, I, yeah, it's, uh, I kind of, yeah, it's, it's not my, uh, it's not my place, but that's how I like to see it. You need to let the autism out. It needs to breathe. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Uh, so that's, uh, so the, yeah, so there is that bip. Um, what else we're working on? Um, uh, we're looking to maybe adding Shamir backups, uh, yeah, but more I'm like, a, for. yeah, but you would be, you'd be, our implementation would be, uh, like a, a two out of three Shamir shares kind of thing. So you essentially, you put three micro SDs, as long as you have two of them left, you're good. Um, so that's kind of nice. Uh, the problem is you don't have enough room, uh, so we might have to delete a lot of the the extra text show help and rewrite some of the rewrite some of our uh, some of our code a lot uh, to save space. You know, we we work in bytes amounts of you know just kilobytes worth of data there left. 
So uh, we, we have to sort of rewrite things as we create new features to make it fit. Uh, mm -hmm. So yeah, so there is uh, Shamir shares. Um, what else? Uh, let me take a quick look here. Actually, I'm curious. I can I, this whole quarantine thing is making me like sort of like lose track of space and time. Um, I know the feeling. Yeah, it's an odd thing, you know, and then there is sort of like, we hope to get like, you hope that like Electrum 4 come out at some point. Uh, it's, I think this is the longest ever that they've taken to release, to make a release. Um, you know, the lightning stuff got in the way. Um, what else? Uh, deterministic builds, uh, need to, uh, need to be added. That'd be nice for, uh, the, yeah. the crazy few who actually try to build a cold card themselves. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, it's a nice to have, um, it's like cold card is already like different than the other hardware wallets, right? Because you can compile the software and run it yourself. Um, what else? Um, we want to do, uh, you know, some optimization on the keyboard. We want to, I want to be able to sign joint market transactions and, uh, yeah, I mean, that's sort of like, you know, there's a bunch of other stuff like proof of reserves and things like that. Uh, but those are sort of like lower on the, on the, on the priority list. Yeah. More business concerns rather than hodlers. Yeah, exactly. I, I mean, reality is that like, you know, code card is fairly well used now, right? So uh, we're trying to figure out how we can help, uh, like entities, like exchanges and, uh, like big, uh, hedge funds and, you know, like people holding a lot of coin using cold cards and, uh, trying to, to help them figure out like, you know, how we, how we can make their lives a little bit easier. Um, and what's nice is some of this stuff trickles out to, uh, to everybody else too. Um, yeah. So, so that's sort of like where we're at now, mm -hmm. well, aside from research on our next device. I think plumbing through all the, the coin kite stuff I wanted to is done. You got any, uh, any thoughts on the, the quarantine? <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, I'm starting to get to the point now where, um, I mean, I've been screaming to people to wear masks now since like January. Um, and, uh, I think we're getting to a point now where the economical catastrophe might kill more people than the virus itself. So, uh, but you can't minimize the virus itself either. So it's like, just like, God damn it, wear masks and, uh, and then move on with your lives. I'm at that point now. Mm -hmm. I mean, like, dude, that, like, I, I just, uh, got back from a grocery store run uh before i hopped on for this and they are literally putting plexiglass shields in front of the the cashier registers at the checkout lines that only cover like a a fourth of the space there before they just give the fucking employees masks or something no it's this whole like mask aversion uh, it, it's, uh, it's so like aggravating to me. Like, it's just, it's just so stupid. Um, and, and it's like, you know, it's going to kill people and, and, and destroy the economy just because people can't wrap their heads around, like putting a stupid thing in your face. Like it's not, it, it really is not that hard and not that complex. This is not a new problem, right? Like you have a contaminant in the air of a type and then you have the appropriate like protection on equipment that like prevents you from being contaminated from that contaminant like, like not new problems right like this stuff is old so you, you know it's just so old it's like you wouldn't be able to ensure factories hospitals uh like loading docks like anything if like masks didn't work like it, it really is that simple right so you know just just go on tv admit that you're all wrong the masks work and and that you know you just didn't have enough and say please can we have enough for healthcare workers uh but we're working on getting everybody masks and that's it like people will kindly understand that there is people who have higher priority for those 
uh, and ramp up production. I mean, it really is not uh, not that hard. Um, and it's amazing because, like, even through the Spanish flu, I mean, it's already known that, like, you know, just putting fabric over your face already helps. You know, it's mm-hmm. really is not that novel. <laughs> it's been a hundred years since the Spanish flu. Yep. And I mean, you know, like I'm right there with you as far as the general attitude. Like I was fucking prepping back in January, like looking at what was going on in China. And now I'm at the point I'm this is just my daily life. I'm used to that. I am terrified of the economic fallout from this at this point. Like countries are just seizing shipments of things from each other as they pass through their borders. Like countries are starting to look at food supply. Like Kazakhstan cut off all wheat the exports. Flour, yeah, it's, and it's like, like holy shit! Like, you know, but, this is gonna domino. Yeah, it's. But do you know what I find interesting? At the same time, it's like I, I'm still fifty fifty on world ending or like things going just fine, because like unlike a war, like infrastructure is not destroyed, right? So it's like as soon as like people understand that the minimum like required uh inconvenient things uh are not like that complex or expensive you, you know people just wear a mask put some glasses you know bring hand sanitizer and and go to work i mean it's like the subway is there buses are there the roads are there the workplaces are there the factories are there and none of this stuff is true for all the wars, right? I mean, after any war, if you were on the where the war was fought, you, you know, like everything was destroyed. So economic catastrophe, like there's very, very, it takes a very long time to rebuild, right? Um, although the rebuilding does provide some jobs, but oftentimes the amount of money that goes around is very small. Um, and then on the on the the attacking country. Uh, resources are very fucked up too because you know they would have bought overbought all the steel, all the iron ore, uh, they would, all the glass, all the stuff, right, to make like bombs and airplanes. So uh, y- you know, like it really is a lose lose there uh, in terms of uh, uh, coming back from the war well fast. But now from this stuff, it really is not that big of a deal in terms of going back to work and and. And, you know, if we get this semi-right, you know, the death count, though horrific, it's still pretty, like, reasonable and small, right? Um, It's a travesty that, you know, like, the stuff is like, (laughs) it's like, it's almost sure death to seniors, right? I mean, it's a very poopy thing, but, uh, uh, but we we can, but we can sort that out, right? Like, I mean, there's going to be some treatment soon. Um that are like sort of tested that would help a lot um you know young younger people can be fucked by this too it's not like it's a free ride uh but it's still within the confines of a small cohort of the population that's gonna like develop something bad um yeah but it's that's it's not looking at the variable of the people though like our are Germans going to trust shipping shit through Switzerland that's important at the end of this? Are all of these morons yeah, who are rent going, striking yeah. now? Oh, like, yeah, for sure. Everything goes back to normal. Because you know what? People need to make money. So, like, everything gets forgotten very fast, right? I mean, look at uh, what Germany need to the world, did to the world, right? I mean, it's not like they were not back in business, you know, just a few decades later. And yeah, now they that, essentially that, own Europe again. That took a few decades, though, is kind of the point I'm trying to make. Like, I'm not saying, like, oh, my God, the world's going to end. But no, but, but it, I think it's going to get fucked up. Yeah, but it took many years. It took a few decades for Germany because, I mean, they were, were leveled off, right? I mean, like, the place was, like, full of holes. <laughs> Look at China right now. I mean, unless they pull off a Hail Mary and convince half the world that we did nothing wrong and we saved everybody, um, there's going to be a bunch of business pulling out of China. They, they had to I kill half of their fucking chicken supply during this, their pork yeah, no, population before it. Like, this is so, going to get fucked up. You see, like, I think it's a big fallacy 
for people to think that you can just bring manufacturing back to the West. It's, it's completely insane. Um, there is a few things there. We don't have enough people to, to, to man all these factories. Like people, I don't think, understand the scale of manufacturing in China to deliver Amazon to your house next day of everything. It's like... Go to we Vietnam. Sim- no, we, we, the, Vietnam is a tiny place. It's like they do very specialized things. It's the same with Malaysia, right? Uh, and say even Philippines too, but those places are like microscopic, right? I mean, when I talk about China, man, it's like, it's like I need, you know, I, I, I need say 100,000 people to work on my factory tomorrow, right? It's like, <laughs> it's like one text message and you have 100,000 people waiting outside the factory. Like now do that times hundreds of thousands too. It's like, it, <laughs> yeah, but dude, there's a whole world out there. There's yeah, India, Africa. No, like but see, no, I know, but Asia. see, no, but see, this is, this is what people don't get. Right. So like China is not like, it's not like backwater, right? Like the, the factories are fairly modern there and, 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 and they also have know-how. It's like factories are not just like, these ephemeral things that you just, you know, snap your fingers and they boom, show up. Like the amount of, of, of like knowledge you need to run a factor of even making like very, very uh, simple things is, is huge. Uh, so you need, you need all the, the, the manufacturing engineers. We don't even have in North America anymore in the West in general. Let me put it uh, this way. Oh, hang on, hang on. And then you need, all the infrastructure for the factories, like power supply everywhere, roads everywhere, material handling everywhere, fuel everywhere. And then you have the regulations problem. Like, so like there is simply no way, like, I mean, there is a reason why India did not do what China did in the last like decades, right? It's just, they simply don't have the know-how, don't have the resources, don't have the logistics, right? I mean, the, the Chinese, for all their faults, and boy, they have many, uh, one thing they nailed is understanding manufacturing, right? And, and, and that's, uh, that's, that's not a, a, this is not a, a, a simple thump your chest like politicians love to do and say, hey, I'm just going to like bring this to my country and, and just because we want to. It's like, it's not even a price thing. Even if you're willing to pay more for the product, like there's just simply no capacity. No, but like, let's say right now, half of the West decides they're going to do that and they don't care what it costs and they don't care how long it takes. And we spend the next five to 10 years no, on it's the gonna, other side of it's this. It's going to take 50, Shinobi. No, it's going to take 50. And in 50 years, the world is already completely different. I don't buy that. Like, really? Yeah, you can't do that because there isn't enough people. We, we, we just, so we don't have things. enough. No, like, there, there is a degree. You need, it doesn't work like that, man. It's not that simple. And then there is the, the problem with regulation, right? Which is not going to change, right? We simply do not have like the ability to like, uh, in the West, of like, say, you know what, like, fuck it. I'm just going to dump all the, the runoffs of my factory into the local river, right? Because if I have to build the machine, like all the trail ponds for the factory, and then like all the cleaning systems, the product becomes unviable. And also there's just simply no room for you to build all this stuff and fit all the other factories too. So what I'm hearing is... um It'll take a while, it'll cost a lot, and people won't get a new iPhone every six months. But I'm not hearing it's impossible. Listen, I, 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 I just, I think even Apple tried to do manufacturing in North America, right, uh, years ago. And uh, it, it, it's just like, dude, it, it's just, it's, uh, see, China was kind of able to do that because they, they rode, like the products were also simpler, when they started this whole, uh, uh, like becoming the manufacturing sort of mecca, uh, so so they like they they acquired the knowledge as things were becoming more complex as products too. Uh, I, I think that 
uh, if society decides to to ditch the minimum wage, uh, so decides to ditch a lot of the 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 labor laws that they have, um, and uh, and and commit a lot more of the population to manufacturing as opposed to liberal arts and whatever, uh, and you know exploit a lot more of like the, the the local land for this kind of stuff uh it, even then it's like you would have to be such a monumental shift in mentality like overnight and very hard for you to achieve this and say let's say just like a generation and a half kind of deal i i i'm exclaim extremely skeptical if not outright would say that I think it's impossible to do it in the West. I think that if this doesn't wrap itself up as fast as it can, and all of these resentments and anger and problems keep festering, it's guaranteed going to happen because people will just go, yeah, let's do that because fuck China. Eh, I think people will forget immediately as soon as they see the... See, <laughs> You can always count people of being like sort of like lazy, just not just in terms of like move, like in terms of thinking and everything else. Like as soon as, as soon as like a person, let's say it got, things got really bad, right? So we have like a semi, a very deep recession, almost like a depression, right? So people are already hurting for money, right? If you tell them that they're going to have to pay like, 20, 30 times more for everything that they buy, dude, they're going to say, fuck this idea of like manufacturing here. But see, I think that's a really simple way of looking at the whole situation because I absolutely think that like half the things that you said are going to happen. Minimum wage is going to get attacked and like we can deal with that. You know why? Why is minimum wage there? Because you have all kinds of idiotic regulations and zoning laws that stop people from making more housing so that housing isn't so expensive. Like it's, it's usually red tape that keeps so, cost of living high. I think I'm more pessimistic on that. I think that like if things get really bad, I think what we're going to see is more towards like socialism, that, that sort of branch as opposed to dogmatism that China had. Um, I, I think that. What they're gonna do is they're gonna just come after. You never, they'll never come out and like go after extreme rich, right? They'll go after the upper, the upper middle class and the middle class. And they're gonna like rape them for taxes and redistribute their wealth that way. You know, they'll create the the universal basic income, that kind of crap, and they'll just sort of like further dig a hole instead of sort of like rethink some of the basics. I, I, that's more where I sit. <laughs> I think that would happen in some parts of America. I'm going to, I'm going to talk about that specifically, but if this gets really bad, um, I think States are just going to do their own fucking thing and pretty much wind up uh, at the other side of this, just not giving two fucks what the federal government says about something. Yeah. I, I mean, you know, I, I, I hope that people see this as an opportunity to sort of like, uh, refactor, uh, the, the, the regulation system, the legal system, you know, like culture and everything else. Uh, I just doubt they'll be that way. So like, for example, in, I think Canada, uh, we all sort of come out of this like reasonably okay. Um, you know, it's going to still be a shitty recession and all the, the good stuff that comes out of something like this, right? But I, I think it will come out, like, fairly okay. So mediocrity of 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 the politics would just sort of remain sort of, like, in its in its course, right? Um, uh, I, I'm very curious to see... Because, I, I mean, the American side, we know how this plays out, right? Like, either way sort of thing. Like, you guys are a little bit more sort of like a... It's a little bit more self-evident, like, direction places, like, states will go and that kind of stuff. But I'm very curious to see what happens in Europe, right? Because Europe has been turning more totalitarian and more weird 
for the last sort of like couple decades. Um, I'm very curious to see what happens there if the if the union survives, um, like a depression there. Um, I think if the EU survives this, then I would not even consider setting foot on European soil for the rest of my life. <laughs> it's gonna be interesting there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I guess. Uh, I don't know. Kind of out of things to uh, talk about. Yep. I uh, I had a long day. <laughs> I think it comes out in my voice. I'm beat today. Um, but uh, I woke up early to smoke ribs. And oh, uh, you bastard. Yeah. But that turned out, you know, but it's that's like that plus the toddler plus work sort of like adds up. And then it was it was a full day. Um, yeah. And yeah, I think I'm going to go to bed early today. <laughs> I'm about to stay up until six in the morning shooting people in a video game. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, I appreciate you coming on, Rodolfo. It's always hey, it's, fun uh, having you. It was, it was my pleasure. It was a nice catching up. Uh, we, we, we didn't get to catch up in the, in the Bitcoin conferences this year. Uh, <laughs> they're all canceled. <laughs> yeah, we'll have next year. <laughs> That's right. All right, man. It was it was nice catching up. I'll I'll see you in the chats. Mm-hmm. Be safe, man. Take care. And punks, I hope you all enjoyed. We'll catch you later. <laughs>